Be responsive to the Lord. Be responsive to the Lord. The Acts of the Apostles tells the story of the Apostles' mission and witnessing of the Gospel to Jews and how they ministered to even the Gentiles, many of whom accepted the good news and turned to following Christ within the Roman control of the known region and beyond. It showed how the Holy Spirit guided the believers in advancing the gospel and advancing the church with fervency, love, compassion, and with humility. So the text from the Acts of the Apostles for which I'll be using this morning, written in Acts chapter 16, verses 9 to 15, and I believe it is a reminder to us that we must be responsive to the Lord if we're going to be faithful stewards in his vineyard. The perception of the world has caused things to be out of line for some people. For us to put the teachings of Christ as priority in our lives, because everyone seems to be going through their own with no thought or consideration for the things of God. And on that note, I would like to share two thoughts that I think can help to order our steps as we seek to be responsive to the Lord. And they are, one, we must be sensitive to God's instructions. Be sensitive to God's instructions. And two, be hospitable. Be hospitable. Firstly, we must be sensitive to God's instructions if we are to be true to our calling in Christ then we must be quick to detect the Lord directives. It serves us well to remember that we are stewards of the Lord's ministry, and so we are to be sensitive to the understanding of the desires of the Lord in our lives. Our mission in fulfilling the will of the Lord is communicated to us in various ways from different sources. Sometimes we are prompted by the preacher. We are prompted by a friend, a family member, a thought that comes to mind, a vision, or even a dream. However, we must be quick to detect what the Holy Spirit is revealing to us and heed the Lord's instructions. The Apostle Paul and his companions were on a mission of spreading the good news of the kingdom of God and setting up churches wherever they went. Their ministry, under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, saw the churches being strengthened in the faith and increasing in numbers daily. Their missionary work at the time was not only being done in Asia Minor, but in places like Derby, Lystra, and Iconium, just to name a few. However, things were about to change because the Lord had intended for the message of the good news to reach all people around the world and was not supposed to be confined to a particular area or people. So we are, we are told in verse 9 of the text that during the night, Paul had a vision in which he saw a man pleading to him to come over into Macedonia and help them. Now, Macedonia was on the European continent and Paul was in Asia Minor, two continents that were separated by the sea. But Paul had the guidance of the Holy Spirit to judge the things God was revealing to him as he served in Christ's ministry. I believe as a people, as people of God, we too must attain spiritual growth to understand how the Holy Spirit is leading us on our earthly pilgrimage. In other words, we must have the inclination or feeling or the ability to judge well the leading of the Holy Spirit so that we too can be effective in our stewardship in Christ's ministry. Verse 10 of the text which reads, says, when he had seen the vision, he immediately tried to cross over to Macedonia being convinced that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. Paul was sensitive to the mission of Christ's ministry. 
And he concluded that his vision was showing him that he needed to go to Macedonia to proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God in that place. The man in his vision was asking for help. And Paul knew that the best help he could offer to anyone was the message of God's salvation plan in Jesus Christ. So what do you think Paul did? What did Paul do? Did he stay? Did he go on a mission? He went on a mission, right? Yes. So he went on a mission. Paul and his colleagues set out on the mission by humbling themselves to follow the Lord's instruction. This text is a reminder to us that the faithful is being called into action by God in various and unusual ways, so we must be attentive and discerning to respond to the mission of Christ when we are called. It's not if. Keyword, when we are called. So my questions then are these. How are we applying ourselves to understand the things that God is calling us to do? And are we in tune with the Holy Spirit to understand the instructions given to us? When we perceive God is calling us to do something, that will bring glory to his name. We should be eager to go and carry out that task courageously. We should be eager to go and carry out that task courageously. Paul and his companions willingly followed the perceived instructions he received in a vision without delay. How many of us would get dreams and visions I would act upon it. Many a times, yes, many a times we get dreams and visions and we, we wonder, oh Lord, what does this mean? What is this saying to me? But most times what we do, we just let it die. We don't act upon it. And sometimes it is God's way of telling us that we need to do something. We need to get up. We need to go out there. So in verses 11 to 12, it says, We therefore set sail from Troas and took a straight course to Samothrace and following day to Neapolis and from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony, and we remained in the city for some days. Like Paul and his companions, we are to be in sync with the Holy Spirit we will be consistent in honoring God's desires for our lives. Hence, it becomes imperative for us to be sensitive to God's instruction in our calling. We might not know what awaits us on our journey, but we can rest assured that Christ Jesus will be with us even unto the end of ages. So, let us become attuned to the Holy Spirit so that we will be able to detect the Lord's leading in our lives. Secondly, we must be hospitable towards others. In other words, we must be welcoming to people who come into our midst. We must be accommodating and kind to those who have come into our space, our church, our community, our social gathering. Many times our lack of accommodating or friendly gestures towards others is what people tend to remember about us the most. Am I right? Yes. Sometimes they don't remember the good things, you know, but just do one bad. One, that's all. But Paul and his companions, they arrived in Philippi, in Macedonia, 
And they did not have a worship place, nor did they meet with someone who was anticipating their arrival. Now you imagine you're going somewhere. You don't know where you're going. You don't have anybody expecting you. You know, in, if it was now, and they, they had to go through the airport, they would have turned them back. Yes? Yes. Because they don't have any stay, they don't have any accommodation, they don't have anybody that they're going to. So it clearly means they're going to run off or something. Yes? But the apostles were about evangelizing to the people in that city. Since Paul's coming to that place was to offer help with a message of salvation through Jesus Christ, and if it were only... Pardon? So they knew what they were about. They didn't know where they were going, no accommodation, but they, know, they knew what they were about. So they went to an appropriate place where they could evangelize. And some women of the city joined them. Paul and his companions then engaged the women in conversation. This is long time women in church. Yes? Long time women, you know, the backbone of the church. The apostles were about evangelizing to the people in that city. Since Paul's coming to that place was to offer help with the message of salvation through Jesus Christ. And if it were only the women that came to them, then they would offer the women help with the word of God. Verse 13 says, On the Sabbath day we went outside the gate by the river, where we supposed there was a place of prayer, and we sat down and spoke to the women who had gathered there. Their evangelizing to the women caused a woman named Lydia to surrender her life to the truth of a Christ that even her household was also converted. Verse 14 says, A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Tyra and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was being said by Paul. Important to note is this. The willingness to turn to the gospel is a work of God's grace which is to say the turning of the hearts toward the truth of God has never been the result of human willpower. Hence, Lydia and her household were converted into the faith because it was a working of God's grace. Remember, it was Jesus who said, you did not choose me, but, but, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. John 15, verse 16. As the people of God, we must pray to God and ask him to touch the hearts of the people we are sent among daily, so that they may respond to his words when we evangelize. Still, this converted woman was moved to show hospitality to missionaries, and so we are told in verse 15, when she and her household were baptized, she urged us, saying, if you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. This woman wanted to show her appreciation to the apostles, coming to them and proclaiming the kingdom of God. So she urged them to come and stay at her home. Lydia wanted her faithfulness to God to radiate through her hospitality to the apostles. Jesus told his disciples about the judgment of the nations in the gospel according to Matthew 25, 31 to 46 regarding our treatment of others and how they will affect those who fail to be hospitable and kind to the less fortunate. So Jesus said in verses 44 to 46, 
Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then you will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Lydia wanted to show her appreciation for the servants of God by being hospitable to them. She offered them a place to stay, stay and the comfort of her home. This was her way of doing good to strangers who came into her midst. The idea that she prevailed against the apostles in coming to her house suggested that she insisted and implored them to come into her hospitality. How are we being hospitable to those God sent into our midst? Especially the bearer of the message of the good news. Abraham was hospitable to the bearers of good news, or angels, if you will, who came to him to tell him that he and his wife, Sarah, would have a child in their old age. Abraham caused his servant to prepare a meal for men who came to him so that they could feast before they left. Jesus even prepared food for those who came to him as he preached. Hence, Jesus showed hospitality even for those who came to hear the bearer of the good news. So my sisters and brothers, the text is a reminder to us to be hospitable towards strangers and the people of God. Our world is filled with deceit and betrayal, but God's grace must not be denied to the less fortunate among us. I am not saying we must allow ourselves to be victims of exploitation and danger, but we still can find creative ways to be hospitable to others. Lest we hear Jesus respond by saying, truly, I tell you, just as you did not do it to the least of these, you did not do it to me. So let us be hospitable. Let us be warm towards each other and show compassion. Oftentimes, we refer to ourselves as being great and good. We are great when, whoever we are, we use our God-given talents to benefit the people around us. If we're not doing that, then we are not great in any sense of the word. It is easy to read and listen to today's gospel and start pointing fingers at others. But it is important that we, sh we see how it applies to our own life. The gospel is always addressed to us, whether individually or collectively. And today, we need to hear what it is saying to us. Of course, we can point a criticizing finger at all the people we know, political, religious, or otherwise, but are we different? How touchy are we about how people treat us, especially if we have title or responsibility? Respect cannot be demanded, but only earned. But hospitality and humility should come as easy as breathing. Service and hospitality go hand in hand. And in today's second reading from the first letter to the Thessalonians, Paul speaks of himself and other church leaders acting like a nurse, tenderly care, caring for her own children. We are a channel of God's word and truth. We never grasp it fully, and we are simply stewards handing it on. The only power is the power of the word itself and the power of truth and of love. And as we speak about service and hospitality, we recognize an organization that is no stranger 
to service, food for the poor. The largest charity organization in Jamaica, food for the poor and partners, over a thousand churches and institutions have helped to distribute food, medicine, educational supplies, and other well-needed items, giving and serving those who are less fortunate a chance at a better and brighter future and showing them through all that the love of God. That is service. But we hear again in verse 8 of First Thessalonians, and it says, So deeply do we care for you that we are determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our own selves, because you have become very dear to us. This is what hospitality and service means. As long as we have our health and energy, each of us should do our best not to be a burden on others, when we truly try hard to offer what we have for the well-being of others, we are not likely to be such a burden. When everyone is giving, then everyone is receiving. It is a beautiful way to live, but it is not the way of the rat race, competitive society, which only thinks of how much can I get. Today's gospel addressed to all of us calls for integrity and honesty, where there is no pulling of rank, no demand for respect or privilege or hearing, no double standards, but a deep sense of equality and mutual respect, a desire to serve, to share what we have, and for the benefit of all. Finally, as we are coming very near to the end of the church year, and we journey towards Advent, let us pray that the Lord makes us instruments of love and grace towards others so that we may obtain God's promises through the sacrificial life of Jesus Christ. I therefore challenge us all to follow the Lord's instruction by humbly following the path he has called us to walk, and let us be welcoming to those God has caused to come into our midst as we seek to honor and be responsive to God by being sensitive to God's instructions and by being hospitable to all people. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.